You might be wondering why my camera looks all crazy. That's because in this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to turn your mirrorless camera into a video recording powerhouse. I'll walk you through all of the parts that went into this build, including some of the optional accessories that you can get for increased functionality. For this build, I'm using the Canon R6. Now, you don't need the R6 to do this, but you might need to make some adjustments depending on the camera that you're using. The reason I'm using the R6 is because it has a maximum record time of 30 minutes and has known overheating problems. Regardless of what camera that you're shooting with, recording for longer periods of time will make your camera hot, which isn't good for the performance and the longevity of your camera. To reduce heating issues, at the heart of this rig is the Atomos Ninja 5. Now the Ninja 5 is both a monitor and a recorder, which means you can both view the footage and record directly to a solid state drive. But I'll talk more about the Ninja in a bit. So before we get to that, let's break this whole rig down and talk about all of the individual components. To start this build off, I'm using the Small Rig Black Mamba cage. Now that cage is specifically for the Canon R5 and R6. So if you're using a Sony or a Fuji, you'll need to pick up the cage that's designed specifically for your camera. The goal with this rig is that it's designed to be modular and easy to interchange all of the various components. So the handles, the top handles, the battery, the follow focus, everything can be removed so that you can scale up or scale down the rig depending on what you're shooting. Now I'm not gonna talk about each of the individual pieces, but I will link them down in the description below. So if you want to find the handles, the top handles, the battery mount adapter, all of that stuff will be down below. Perhaps the most critical piece of this whole build is the bottom plate. In this case, it attaches with the Arca Swiss adapter that's on the bottom of my cage. And it also allows me to mount in these 20 millimeter rods so that I can attach all of these different accessories. For me, one of my favorite components is the side handle. And the reason for that is that it gives you a wider base when you're holding your camera. Let's say you're using a lens that doesn't have image stabilization. Having that wider base so that you can actually handle the camera smoothly will make your footage look that much better. Same thing goes for the top handle. Having that top handle and having the center of gravity relatively nice and neutral means I can pretty much handle the whole thing with one hand and not have to worry about it tilting forward or tilting back or shaking all over the place. Compared to cinema cameras, DSLR and mirrorless cameras can be very light, which is often why you get really shaky footage if you're just hand holding. But as soon as you rig it up, you add a handle, you add a battery, you add a monitor, now the whole rig is a lot more hefty and it's easier to kind of get that cinematic look to your footage. All right, so now let's jump into the Ninja and why I chose it to be at the heart of my rig. The benefit of using the Ninja is that it takes two of the biggest heat generating tasks away from the camera, that being the actual recording function and then the powering on of the screen. The Ninja records footage through the HDMI out on your camera. And as long as your camera supports it, the Ninja can actually record 4K footage all the way up to 60 frames per second. Now, if you shoot a lot of high frame rate footage at 120 frames per second, Atomos actually makes the Ninja 5 Plus, which works with cameras that support those higher frame rates. One word of caution if you are picking up an HDMI cable is to make sure you pick up the right HDMI cable. Some cameras have a full HDMI port, others have a mini, or in my case, the Canon R6 has a micro D HDMI port. So you'll wanna make sure that you pick up the appropriate cable, otherwise, you won't be able to record. Another thing to note is that the HDMI cable also passes audio. So if you have a microphone that's hooked up to your camera, that audio can then pass through the HDMI into the recorder. Now this whole thing runs off of a single battery and it's this power bank. It's kind of like a generic Amazon one that I found, but it's hooked up to the back and it outputs power through USB-C power delivery. Now what it's doing is it's both powering the monitor because I have it hooked up to this adapter at the back. And now this is a very specific cable. It's a blind spot cable that's designed to work specifically with the Ninja. There are other cables out there, but they kind of aren't as reliable. So if you are gonna pick one up, I highly recommend getting the blind spot. And then I'm using a dummy battery. So depending on your camera, depending on your 
your camera, you might be able to use one of these USB-C to USB-C cables where you plug it into the power bank and directly into the USB-C port on your camera. But for the Canon R6, that only charges the camera when the camera is turned off. So instead, I'm using a dummy battery and the dummy battery goes into the battery port. It's basically just a power adapter and then it goes in to USB-C. The nice thing about the dummy battery is that it eliminates your need to carry around hundreds of these Canon batteries, where these Canon batteries cost, you know, $100 each. Now I can get a power bank that is 10 times the size, but keep in mind that's powering both the camera and the recorder. When it comes to setting up your camera, specifically the R6, you're gonna wanna change some of the settings so that the camera doesn't turn off on you. So in my case, I turn eco mode off. I'm also setting the standby mode to off or set it to as long as you can. Another thing is to set the HDMI mode to HDMI plus screen. That way, all of my settings show up on the screen that's on my camera, and then the feed out of the HDMI is a clean video feed. When it comes to recording and how much life and time you can actually get out of this whole rig, a lot of that is gonna depend on your screen settings as well as how big of a battery bank you're using. In my case, with these battery banks, now I've got two of them, so I ran it with the screen on the camera on, with the Ninja recording, and I was able to get about an hour and 45 minutes on my first battery. Now that battery is a little bit older. I have another one that's a little bit newer, and I was able to get two minutes and 15 seconds. Now, partway through that, I did get a warning on my screen that the R6 was kind of entering that overheating territory. But what I actually did is I flipped out the screen and that actually made the overheating go away. The problem, of course, is that the screen itself generates heat. And if you can move it away from the camera, then it's easier for all that heat to dissipate. Now I'm gonna walk through some of the optional accessories that I've added to this rig, just to kind of add a little bit more function and a little bit more versatility. The first is this follow focus. Now the best part with a follow focus is that you can manually focus. And if you're using the focus peaking on the Ninja paired with the follow focus, it's an absolute game changer. Using the follow focus can be a bit tricky, but the way I've got it set up is so I can rest the palm of my hand on the bottom of the handle and then with two fingers, grab the wheel and either focus forward or focus backward. It's super critical if you're shooting something that has a lot of moving action because the autofocus doesn't always keep up with the thing that you're shooting. Another thing I'm using when I want a little bit more functionality outdoors is a matte box. A matte box works to cut out glare and lens flares and unwanted artifacts in your footage. It allows you to get a little bit more contrast so that you don't have washout in your images. With my matte box, I actually have one of the four by 5.65 variable ND filters from Smallrig. Now the cool thing is that it slots into the matte box so you can either add it or remove it but there's a little wheel on top so that you can go from just a little bit of ND all the way up to the maximum amount of ND. The small rig matte box is designed to screw onto the front of your lens. But if you're using a prime lens, you can get one of these 20 millimeter rail adapters. So you basically just put this onto the rails and then the matte box will screw in here so that you don't have to put all that weight on your lens. But in my case, because I'm using a zoom lens where the front of the lens goes in and out, I actually have to screw it on to the threads that are on the front of my lens. So this might look like a bit of overkill, but the added functionality of being able to add or remove a matte box will make a ton of difference, especially when you're shooting outside. And just uh, look how professional I look. Depending on what you're shooting, a rig like this might be absolutely overkill. I would never use this on something like a wedding, but for an interview or for a live production or something where I need to be able to focus manually, I need to handle my camera in a way that's ergonomic, and I need to record for long periods of time where I don't have to worry about overheating, I don't have to worry about time limits, and everything gets dumped onto a solid state drive, Having a rig like this can be an absolute game changer. 
If you're interested in any of the individual parts that I use to build this rig, again, everything will be linked in the description below. If you learned something today, go ahead, give this video a thumbs up or leave a comment. Maybe there's an accessory that I don't have that you think I should have. And if you're not already subscribed and you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead, hit that button. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one. I will say this is pretty, it makes me look professional. Not that I'm not professional, just that it makes me look more professional.